Okay, good evening. Tonight we're going to talk about our last education myth article. It's called College at Risk by Andrew Del Banco, and it appears on page 219 to 228 in Rereading America. So a little bit of a background on Professor Del Banco. Uh, he's been a professor in charge of the American Studies program at Columbia University since 1995. He's actually a pretty distinguished professor. He has taught at uh, Harvard University. He's Harvard educated and also taught at Harvard University. And a little f a known fact about uh, Del Banco was that in 2012, he was presented with the National Humanities Award uh, from President Obama for his work in writing about education, the role of education and educational issues, and the role of classical authors in education. He also has written many books, uh, uh, very, very books, many books that have received many awards um, and man, many uh, uh, scholarly awards uh, in, in uh, English education, literature, and humanities, and so forth. He's also written ma many articles for scholarly publications, so he's very famous and also has contributed a lot of articles to uh, prestigious private magazines like, like the New York Review of Books and so forth. So he's a pretty distinguished and very well-known professor, very well-respected, probably one of those great professors that, that you encounter in school, uh, one of those famous professors that, that's very well-distinguished, very well-accomplished, and an award-winning professor and a very well-known within his circles. Anyway, in this article, College at Risk, he, he talks about what is the role of college education today? That is a big question, uh, even for you, right? Right now, it's October of your senior year uh, for many of you, and basically, you'll be graduating uh, in summer of next year. So even soon after that, you'll be beginning your college careers, many of you, whether it's in community colleges, state colleges, some of you will go to private colleges, some of you may even go out of state uh, to state or private colleges. So you have a lot of choices with you out there, and a lot of I'm sure a lot of you are considering colleges, and you'll be also be uh, probably applying already this year for colleges. So the role of a college education should be uh, really foremost on your mind because you know uh, I know in your backgrounds that you submitted to me, a lot of you actually have uh, jobs, you actually work jobs, so it's going to be a lot of your money, uh, uh, your parents' money is also in many cases, uh, but your money. You're investing your funds in your education. You want to make the best possible decision. And you have an element of time. Like how, how, how much time should I be spending in school? You know, two, two years in community college, then transfer to a state college, two more years, two or three more years, you know, four years, four and a half years, even graduate early or even five years in college. Uh, or even maybe some, some of you may have to work part time and then you go to school uh, or, or actually work full time, possibly or part time. And then you have to go to school. Uh, part time uh, and there, there's so your school uh, career may be a standard, but a lot of you are thinking about what is the role of of a college education? Excuse me, sorry. That that uh, Del Banco talks about. Well, he's saying that you know, like in the past, uh, a lot of education was based on uh, you know the foundation of education was based on that solid humanities and liberal arts education where young people went to find themselves. You know, like. They're reaching their, their age of maturity or they're actually maturing in college. They're finding themselves uh, socially. Uh, they're, they're growing up. They're also finding themselves academically. They're finding what, what, what interests them. They're finding their career. And it's very important that they get that liberal arts education. So it's, I mean, it's still a search. It's still very important that they get that really strong humanities and liberal arts education or a la critical thinking, right? You know, those critical thinking type classes where the student can actually uh, learn about themselves, make, make their right decisions, make the right choices, uh, think about life, interact with their teachers and professors, a la uh, Professor Gibson, and eventually choose a great career or basically uh, move into a great career while in college, um, that, that they, they find it, it best suits themselves. So you had that basic foundation in liberal arts education. That still exists today, right? To the chagrin of many students, right? Uh, like in community colleges, you're required to take two years of general education. So a lot of students go to community college to get those two years of general education or those liberal arts types classes like English, history, social science out of the way. So, so they actually take uh, two, two years of, of those classes uh, to get those requirements out of the way. And then they'd spend the rest of their two years, you know, tr traditionally to do their business, for example, business classes or science classes 
or, or, or other classes in her major to basically complete their, their degree. So basically they're, they're, that, that uh, requirement still remains that humanities and liberal arts requirement. And that brings up the controversy because of course, a lot of students say, why are we always taking a class, right? Even this class, I like to joke around, ask the students, right? Uh, how, if English was not required, would you still be here, right? And the students will laugh or look at me and maybe a few would raise their hand and a lot of them would, would say, oh, I'm, I'm not gonna take an English class if it's not required, right? So English is like a liberal arts type of class, right? But a lot of students, yeah, but eh, it's really great to take English anyway, because, you know, you actually learn how to critically think and, you know, I learn how to read, write very well, write critically well. And, and, I, and I really applaud that. Right. And other classes, too. So basically those classes offer those humanities, liberal arts classes offer that critical thinking skills. And many employers argue, hey, you know, we actually want to hire those students who, who have those liberal arts degree. Right. And you know, we could train them to be a manager at a bank. Right. Because they actually have more critical thinking skills. Right. They actually, do, they actually have more, more better critical thinking skills than some of these biz, cool business students or these other students, these more technical majors there. So, so many employers say, hey, let, let, liberal arts majors are pretty good, right? And then uh, basically, and then you have the uh, the converse side, right? The business majors are actually making fun of the liberal arts majors, saying, "Oh, you know, those they're just taking the easy classes, right?" But or the science majors are making fun, like like the doctors are making fun of this uh, liberal arts major, saying, "Oh, these classes are too easy." And then it's back and forth, right? It's back and forth. So basically, there's that, that controversy there, right? But students do have, sorry, stu students do have a valid, um, a valid concern about about classes about, about about what the role of a college education is so a student has to think about that and then you should think about that too because maybe in the future andrew del banco is worried about that you know he's saying that maybe in today's changing world of technology technological changes social changes economic changes he's worried about, about the role of liberal art education right he's worried that maybe these vocational type classes or these technical classes are actually going to be we're going to take over the liberal arts classes and basically they're just going to basically shove aside the liberal arts. So he's kind of worried about the role of liberal education in the future. He, he wants to preserve that in college and he says that liberal education, those classes you really need for the student to, to interact with the teachers, interact with the students. And he gives a number of examples about like a student basically, uh, you know, you know, students were debating Confucianism in China and basically uh, one of the students uh, disagreed with the other classmates. But that started a great critical discussion, right, that both sides but, but both, uh, you know, people, that one student and other students sort of, that started a great discussion that uh, was beneficial to all parties, right? So you want to have that critical discussion of different perspectives, like the, the critical thinking type of thing deal. So Del Banco was saying that's really great. And students find themselves too, right? So he's basically worried about, he wants that, that preserved. You know, he also, he also has kind of a sense of humor too. He's giving little jokes about um, the college, the, the old myth the college education where maybe a class at Williams College when he was at Williams College is actually held in the professor's house uh you know uh with the fireplace and you have two dogs lying in the fireplace and, and that class humanities class is held there right but in contrast in reality what is the reality of classes right I think I said this in a previous video right you basically have your teacher many classes your teacher teaching you from an online platform right and then you don't even see the teacher right you know it's, it, it could be even that Something like that, or a teacher lecturing you. Uh, le you're in the lecture hall with 300 other students too, right? And the teacher doesn't even know your name, right? Or it may just be a lecture, or maybe a teacher's aide is actually helping you. The professor's not really. There's no professor teacher. There just might be a graduate student uh, helping you in, in this in the larger universities. So Del Banco is really uh, worried about that. He's worried about the role of higher education. And uh, as you read the article, you want to have your opinion. Like what what do you what do you, what is Del Banco saying about the purpose? of a college education. So you'll have a chance in a homework assignment to explain that. What's your reaction to that? What you think, and what do you think the purpose of a college education is? You know, how about yourself, right? Do you want to be, do you want to be, only take liberal arts classes? Do you want to take both types of classes? Or do you want to focus more on technical classes? Or you really want to focus more on the vacations or even different alternatives that we haven't talked about? So that, that's kind of uh, uh, up for you to think about in terms of what the purpose of college education would be, because that's gonna be impacting you too in the future, right? Because you're gonna be paying uh, the tuition, right? You, you have to make the right choices with your tuition choices. Uh, one thing I'd like to say important, right? That a little bit relates to the article, uh, just my opinion uh, is that, you know, whatever you choose, right? You know, may, maybe college in the future, there may not be a set major because since people change so many jobs, as it was hinted in the previous article about the myth of education, maybe as as so there are so many different jobs, may, may, maybe people should should be up be to have the college education geared towards 
be able to learn different types of jobs. So I'm kind of saying even then, there's that consideration. But I'm saying whatever happens in college, I think you should find, you know, I personally feel this is my opinion that you should find a career or basically a, a, a calling in life that, that you enjoy, right? It's not what your brothers and sisters tell you to do. It's not what your parents tell you to do. It's not what uh, teachers or counselors tell you to do. It's not what people in society tell you to do. It's what you feel is ha will make you happy because basically you're the ones going to be sitting in your job, you know, uh, four or five years down the line, right? And whether you enjoy it or not, is going to be a big factor in the happiness of your life. So you have to find something that you truly enjoy, right? You don't, you can't really, I know you had to look at money considerations and things like that, or basic practicality, right? Helping your family and so forth. That's very important. But, but uh, equally important is you had to find something that you really enjoy because you may, you may go into something like a money type of job, for example, but if you don't have any passion towards that job, it's going to show in your day-to-day -day performance, right? So, or, and you're not going to be very happy. You might do very well, but you're not going to be happy. So you have to find something that you personally enjoy. That's just based on my personal experience, right? Uh, like when I came out of college, I was just based, oh yeah, go, go into business major. Just, just, just take business classes so, so you can get a job and sit in office, right? Make money, right? So I did that to, to some extent. And I think I told you a little bit about this in my intro, but then I wasn't happy. And I, my real calling or basically what my passion was, was English literature, right? So I wanted to study that in graduate school. So, so I, so late years later, right? Not in college, but years after I graduated from college, I finally decided to do something for my graduate degree that I really truly love. But I think I would urge you to basically find something you love right away when you're doing your bachelor's degree, right? You know, do earlier. Don't, don't wait until uh, later when you're, when you're adult. And you have more complications in life. Basically, pick something that you yourself love. So that's just my opinion, right? But basically, uh, and you can react to it, right? You know, like if you disagree with me, uh, let me know. You know, as you go through your homework, but, but but think about what the purpose of college education is, and what you think it should be to make to make make your money worthwhile, and make it worthwhile for your career and your family, and make it worthwhile for you personally, right? What should be the role of a college education? So with that. I uh, will talk to you later. Okay, thank you. Bye.